Welcome to GMAT Club. Today we'll discuss how you can study quant using various GMAT Club tools like quizzes, tests, error logs, and many more. If math is something that scares you, don't worry. In this video, I'll be giving you an exact step-by-step -step process for you to follow. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Step one, get familiar with GMAT quant. First, you need to know the GMAT quant syllabus and its composition. The GMAT quant consists of high school math, which tests topics like arithmetic, algebra, word problems, number theory, statistics, probability, etc. Quant does not test any complex topics like integrals or calculus, and it only slightly touches geometry. We'll touch on the geometry part later in the video and why it's not completely gone from the GMAT. We've created this graph if you want to see the distribution of what the quant syllabus contains. Here's a complete overview of the GMAT quant syllabus. As you guys can see, 60% of the questions will be testing arithmetic and algebra, and only about 10% go to deeper topics such as statistics and probability. You want to master these proportionately. Don't spend all your time on probability because you may not see it on the test. Step two, take a diagnostic test. Now it's time for a diagnostic test. We're doing this to know where we actually are. Your goal here is to set a baseline score. Don't worry if your score isn't where you want it to be. Remember, this is just the beginning. Take one of those free GMAT prep tests from mba.com or you can find some for free on GMAT Club's website which I'll link down below. When you take this test, try to replicate real test conditions as much as possible. Find a quiet space and make sure you're fully focused during this test. This will make sure you have the most accurate picture of where you stand. Step three, set your target score. All right, you've got your starting point. Now, what's your final destination? How much do you want to improve? Use this as a guide to set a realistic target. If you're starting at a 455 and aiming for a 755, you might be setting yourself up for disappointment. But it is possible possible to improve more than 150 points. You just have to study harder than 90% of all other people, which means doing things such as restructuring your schedule to study early in the morning, making detailed notes for every topic, removing distractions and timing every question, and constantly reviewing your mistakes. Improvement is not about how much time you spend, but how much you're able to learn and apply. You need to feel that you are learning material. If you're not getting that feeling, stop and find another way to learn that works for you. Here's a pro tip. Use GMAT Club's What Are My Chances automatic profile evaluation tool. In just two minutes, you'll get a personalized assessment. This tool considers your academic background, work experience, and target schools to give you a realistic goal to aim for. So make sure you check it out in the description. For example, if you're aiming for a top 10 business school, you might need a quant score in the 80 to 90 range. But if you're targeting schools in the 20 to 30 range, a score of 77 to 79 might be sufficient. The aim is to set a goal that's challenging but achievable. Step four, identify your weaknesses. Now I'll be telling you about two things which you cannot miss. One, question timer. When you start solving a question, you'll see a GMAT timer. This is not just a regular timer. When you take the timer, your question's answer is updated on the error log automatically, and you also get to see how your answer compares to how thousands of other users attempted the same question. You also get to check what level of question you're taking. Next we have is forum quiz. If you want to solve questions in an adaptive format and you want to choose your own set of questions like a certain topic that you're weak at, then head over to our forum quiz tool. It's one of our underrated tools and it was one of the best resources that helped me crack the GMAT. I'll put the link in the description down below. After this, you have to analyze any silly mistakes you made which can be prevented, what topics made you uncomfortable, and is there anything you feel that can be improved? GMAT Club offers an error log tool where you can note down your mistakes and review them every once in a while. Here's how you can use it effectively. Note down every question you get wrong or struggle with. Write down why you got it wrong. Was it a calculation error? A concept you didn't understand? Research the correct method to solve the problem. Try to solve similar problems to reinforce your learning. Yes, this is time consuming, but trust me, it's worth it. Again, you'll get all the links in the description. Step five, create your study plan. Now we're getting to the good stuff it's time to create your GMAT planner. You'll need some solid study materials. To do so, you can check out our video on some of the best resources out there. Use these resources to study and plan your day-to-day -day tasks. Aim to solve at least 10 problems a day. Stick to the topics you just covered. You can also use these topic-wise lectures provided by the GMAT Club, which you can easily find on the channel. Also, see at what time you're most productive. Some people tend to put in more work at night, while some feel energetic in the morning. 
Do follow what suits you the best. Step six, avoid common pitfalls. Here's where many people stumble. They jump into questions and tests without proper preparation, expecting miracles. Everything needs practice and consistency. Think of quant prep like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You need to master the basics before moving on to complex problems. There's no point in trying to solve advanced probability questions if you're not confident with the basics. Here are some common pitfalls to avoid. Skipping the fundamentals. Make sure you have a solid grasp of basic math concepts before moving on to more advanced topics. Not timing yourself. The quant is as much about time management as it is about math skills. Always practice with a timer. Ignoring your mistakes. Every mistake is a learning opportunity. Analyze them. It is better to talk about focusing on hard questions only. Some people skip easy and medium questions thinking that if they can solve hard ones, they don't need to try to solve medium and easy ones. This does not work. Don't try to fly before you learn how to crawl. And please note down your mistakes. A simple notepad will do. Just make sure you're tracking your mistakes and learning from them. And if you don't like entering your mistakes manually, well, you can use GMAT Club's automatic error log. It works together with a timer and records any question. Step seven, commit to excellence. What can I do to improve my score? Well, maybe it's about creating your own notes. Perhaps it's not moving to the next chapter until you've mastered 90% of the questions. Or it could be adjusting your schedule to study at your peak performance time. Ask yourself these kinds of questions. See what you can do on your own to improve something. Whatever it is, commit to it. Here are some ideas to elevate your prep. Create a distraction-free study environment. Your GMAT prep deserves your full attention. Find an accountability partner. Go to the link in description and you'll have to sign up and fill out a form and we'll link you with your study buddy based on where you live. Make sure you engage in the forum, do some practice, or complete some quizzes because you get points that you can use later to get free courses, consultation sessions, and stuff worth hundreds of dollars. Take care of your physical and mental health. A healthy body houses a healthy mind. As you become more confident, dive into the GMAT Club Quant Forum. You'll find thousands of people facing the same challenges. Ask questions, give answers, make friends, and engage in discussions. These things do not directly help you improve your score, but can open your perspective and make you aware of how other students are doing stuff. The final stretch. Once you've worked through the quant section, start taking quant-only practice tests. GMAT Club tests are perfect for this. These tests are slightly harder than the real GMAT, which is great for building your confidence and stamina. Evaluate your results honestly. And here's a golden rule. Don't leave a topic until you can solve 90% of the questions correctly in the allotted time. If you're unsure and want more practice, I highly suggest you go through the question banks provided. Mistakes will always come around like boomerangs. If you don't deal with them now, they'll come back for sure. If you need extra help in quant, check out the quant resources on the GMAT Club YouTube channel or their GMAT Quant book section, which you can download for free. Here's a quick checklist for your final stretch. Take at least two to three full length practice tests under real exam conditions. Review all questions, not just the ones you got wrong. Focus on your timing. Aim to have five to 10 minutes left at the end for review. Don't neglect your strong areas. Keep them sharp while working on your weaknesses. Stay calm and confident. Remember all the hard work that you've put in. So there you have it folks, your roadmap to acing the GMAT quant. Remember, this journey isn't about being perfect from the start. It's about being consistent and improving with time. Your GMAT score doesn't define you, but it opens doors to amazing opportunities. So give it your all, but also remember to enjoy the process. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We've got tons more GMAT wisdom coming your way. Share this video with your study buddies or anyone you know who's on their GMAT journey. And I'll see you guys next time. Till then, keep studying and keep rocking.